this is not going to be your typical June Nintendo Direct predictions video. And what I mean by that is you will see a lot of games talked about here in this video, which I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about, or if they are talking about them, they aren't talking about them enough. And I will be trying my best to include some predictions and picks that I'm not seeing very many people talk about. And if there are some popular predictions and picks here, I'll try to put my own spin on them just so this isn't your typical June Nintendo Direct predictions video. Hey guys, Nishquick here. So you guys know I don't really do predictions and speculation or news related videos on my channel, but this Nintendo Direct is actually kind of exciting for me. I really feel like if Nintendo plays their cards right, if they have a good enough lineup in this Direct, this won't just be the best showcase of 2024, but this could be one of the best Nintendo Directs of all time. And that's a very hard move to make, especially with us being so close to Nintendo Switch 2. But I have a feeling that they have a lot up their sleeve. So if you guys are excited for the future of Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch 2, and if you guys are excited to react and watch the June Nintendo Direct with me later this month, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Nintendo and RPG content like this. So I'm going to get right into the meat of it for the first prediction on this list, and that is a remake of the game Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. This game was originally on the SNES, and I'm gonna tell you guys this. I genuinely, really seriously think this game is going to be at the Direct. I was so certain that this game would be in the September Nintendo Direct last year, and I was thoroughly shocked and thoroughly surprised that it was not there. I was genuinely worried and a little bit concerned and sad that we didn't see it. And you might be like, hey, wh why would you feel that way? Well, let me tell you about the history of this game and why it's going to be very important in this showcase. So as far as I can remember, ever since around 2021 and 2022, around that time, before even Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes was announced, I remember a lot of rumors and a lot of leaks surrounding a remake of Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War from people like Nate the Hate, who many of you guys might know how reliable Nate the Hate or Direct Feed Games is. And it all made so much sense. The first two Marth games, so Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem were remade on the Nintendo DS. And then Fire Emblem Gaiden, which was also an NES game, was remade on the 3DS as Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. But with all of these Fire Emblem games being remade, the logical next step is for Fire Emblem 4 to be remade next since the first three already got remakes. Fire Emblem 4's remake is still MIA and here's the craziest thing. This is the most interesting bit of information. You see, Fire Emblem Three Houses was considered FE17 as its code name, and Fire Emblem Engage was considered FE19. And Intelligent Systems counts all remakes, all mainline entries as numbered Fire Emblem games in their code name. So, you guys tell me in the comments what the heck is Fire Emblem 18 and where the heck is it? <laughs> I do want to note that Fire Emblem Engage was actually supposed to release sometime during the pandemic in 2020, but was obviously significantly delayed because of issues with development and work from home and the pandemic and all that. But because of that significant delay, and because they really wanted to prioritize the Fire Emblem anniversary game, 
they had to really restructure the release cycle of a lot of these upcoming Fire Emblem games. And I think the original intended release for Genealogy of the Holy War was significantly impacted because of Fire Emblem Engage's developmental struggles and change in the release timing. And you guys might be saying, Genealogy of the Holy War Remake, oh it's another remake to add to the pile of remakes and remasters for this year. Well, let me ask you guys this question, and I'm being very serious about this. I want you guys to tell me which one of you guys has legally and officially played a Western English US release of Fire Emblem 4 Genealogy of the Holy War. Because not only is this game going to be remade for the modern day, this is going to be the very first time that this game comes to the West, this game comes to North America, and it will be released outside of Japan. So this is as new of a Fire Emblem game as it gets. <laughs> I do have one question and slight concern. So I've heard that Fire Emblem 4 Genealogy of the Holy War is very closely related to Fire Emblem 5 Thracia 776. So I'm wondering, is the reason this game was taking a little longer? Is it possibly because they're trying to combine Genealogy and Thracia into one super mega massive Fire Emblem game? I highly doubt this is the case. But I'm curious, are they really going to do a Thracia remake after Genealogy, or would they just kind of combine them together so they can move on to Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn? Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Alright, let's move on from Fire Emblem because I've been talking about this game for a very long time. I don't think we're going to get any new original Mario games here because this year has been stacked with Mario. <laughs> Mario vs Donkey Kong, Princess Peach Showtime, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD are all coming this year. But I do think one small little minor Mario game will come over to the Nintendo Switch. And looking here on my notes, this isn't really minor at all, but I do think that we really are owed Super Mario Galaxy 2 on the Nintendo Switch, and it would be a little strange to have 3D All-Stars and not have Galaxy 2. I remember everyone was concerned about that, but I think it'll also be a little strange to not be currently selling 3D All-Stars anymore, and then to now sell Mario Galaxy 2. If Mario Galaxy 2 ever comes back, I can unfortunately probably see them doing this limited release thing that they like to do for some reason. I have no clue why they do it and I have no clue why they would do it. And I feel like this might also be an all digital release just to get this out and get this over with, you know? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think Nintendo could do about Galaxy 2 in the comments below. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are games that should have released two years back. 2022 was the right year to release these Zelda remasters, and I'm really confused why they haven't shown up since. So here's what I think they should do with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. I just really hope that they're properly remastered and properly priced. What I mean by that is properly remastered on the level of Skyward Sword HD. Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD don't need any visual upgrades or visual touch-ups of any sort. All I want is quality of life features, make it so that the gamepad functionalities transfer smoothly over to the Nintendo Switch controls. But I think the biggest, most important thing for me personally with games like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess is to see them at 60 FPS. And that's kind of my biggest wish with these. I really love that they went the extra mile and made Skyward Sword HD a 60 FPS game. And if they don't do this for Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, I just wouldn't see the value as much as I would see it for something like Skyward Sword, which had redone controls, enhanced frame rates, and massive quality of life improvements that made it a lot easier and a lot more manageable of a game to play on the Nintendo Switch. And here's the thing, I'll be honest, if 
Nintendo doesn't remaster Wind Waker and Twilight Princess to the level of Skyward Sword and just ports the Wii U versions onto the Switch with minor control changes, I'll be a little upset and I'm going to bring out the Skyward Sword HD apology forums because I remember so many people upset with Skyward Sword HD and instead just begging and begging for Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. So if these highly anticipated games come out, they better be worth the wait. And on top of that, I hope they're not overpriced. I hope they don't sell these games separately for $60. And even if they have a lot of quality of life improvements, enhanced visuals and frame rates, I think selling them separately for $60 this late in the Switch lifecycle is a little steep. I really think that they should bundle them together for max $60 hopefully $50. Then again, this is Nintendo we're talking about. I can totally see them bundling it together and pricing it at 70. So I'm prepared for the worst, but I guess we'll see what they plan to do with these games. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you guys, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this, because I don't usually do predictions and speculations and news related videos like this, but I was reminded of when I used to make videos like this because this weekend I went back and saw some of my old videos from 2021 and I saw a June E3 Nintendo Direct predictions video where I had all these crazy outlandish theories. Some of them came true, some of them didn't, but it got me a little more excited for what Nintendo is going to show off this summer. So if you enjoy content like this and you maybe want to see more, let me know in the comments below. I would also really appreciate a like and a subscribe from you guys as well. Anyways, let's continue on with this video. I really hope we don't see any Pokemon in this Direct. And a lot of people would say, oh, Legend ZA is coming out next year. Yeah, it is coming out next year, but I still don't know if a June Direct is a good enough time to showcase that game. Because I am hoping, and I am of the camp that thinks that Legends CA will be a mid-2025 game, or hopefully a late-2025 game. I would be a little upset if Game Freak just comes out of nowhere and says, January 2025 for Legends CA. I don't think I would feel very optimistic for the game if they release it so early next year. And don't get me started on the rumors of a black and white remake, I swear. <laughs> but my whole point is, I don't want Pokemon in this direct. I want them to take their time. I want them to show Legend ZA when it's ready. And I hope that whenever we do see it, it's good, it looks good, it looks polished, and they don't rush this game keep it for later in the year. I think that would be the best for Pokemon Company and Game Freak. So what is a Nintendo Direct without third party games? There's going to be a lot of third party games in this one and in most general directs, the majority of the content in the Direct is usually third party games, usually indie games. I will say this, I don't think we'll see Hollow Knight Silk Song here. And the reason is, is because I really have this feeling that Microsoft has the marketing rights for that game. They had it in their 2022 Xbox showcase. A lot of these rumblings about Hollow Knight Silk Song on the Xbox store page are coming from the Xbox store page, as well as, of course, the ESRB ratings. But I really feel like Microsoft is going to be the ones to show this off. And we'll see about that this weekend as I'm recording this video right now. So I don't think Hollow Knight will be in the Nintendo Direct. What we do sort of know is going to be at the Nintendo Direct is Square Enix. And they will definitely have the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D games on the Nintendo Switch and in the Nintendo Direct. And I say games because it's not just going to be Dragon Quest 3. There is rumors about it being the whole... Erdrick trilogy for many years now, ever since Yuji Horii kind of teased it himself at the Dragon Quest Day Celebration livestream in 2021. So I've always thought that it's going to be all three games bundled in one, and I think that's what they're going to do on the Nintendo Switch. And our favorite leaker, Midori, has sort of already confirmed that we'll see it at the Nintendo Direct, so that's really good news. Along with that, I feel like 
I've heard rumors and rumblings of people saying, or even Team Asano wanting to bring over the first Bravely Default game over to the Nintendo Switch. Do you guys think that'll happen? I think that is a very good possibility to happen because many people have played Bravely Default 2, but not enough of them ha might have played Bravely Default 1. I think it still sold reasonably well on the Nintendo 3DS, but it would be nice to have it on the Nintendo Switch as well. And this is kind of my oddball prediction and <laughs> my wild card prediction, but what do you guys think? of the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy coming over to the Nintendo Switch. I'm kind of confused why they aren't there, because as of now, we have every single Final Fantasy game, every single numbered Final Fantasy game, 1 through 10, and then of course 12, because 11 is the MMO, it's probably not going to come to Switch. So I'm wondering, where the heck is 13? 13 2 and Lightning Returns. I think it would be awesome to see those on the Nintendo Switch, and I don't even think those games have gotten modern remasters, I think they're just on PS3 and Steam? Correct me if I'm wrong, and let me know in the comments why you think we haven't seen Final Fantasy XIII remasters, because if it comes to Nintendo Switch, I would hope that it comes to Xbox and PlayStation as well, but it would just be awesome to see those games in a Nintendo Direct, because we have, like I said, Final Fantasy 1 through 10, 12, we would get the 13 games, and technically on Switch, we have Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. So we're getting close to being the ultimate Final Fantasy system. Another game not really from Square Enix, but sort of related to Square Enix, is a game from the developer Mistwalker called Fantasian. I have been really, really hoping and praying to see this game get a console release because this is a really awesome, really cool and ingenious game developed by the legendary father of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi, with a stellar soundtrack by none other than Nobuo Uematsu. But the big problem is it's stuck on Apple Arcade, and I'm an Android user, so I can't play the game. And I've been hearing Midori and a lot of other people say that this is most likely possible, and it's not really a pipe dream anymore, so I hope to see this announcement this June. And while we're at it, since I am predicting Fantasia, why not throw in the rest of the Operation Rainfall games in there as well, and that includes Pandora's Tower and The Last Story. I just remembered these because Hironobu Sakaguchi and Nobuo Uematsu did work on The Last Story, and Xenoblade Chronicles is here on the Nintendo Switch. Why not throw the other Operation Rainfall games to tie in the legacy together? and have them on a modern system. That would be another awesome announcement at this Direct. As for other third-party games, I can't really think of any others at the top of my head right now, but I do remember way back in 2021, there was rumors about an exclusive Resident Evil game coming to the Nintendo Switch, which we still have not yet seen. I am sort of thinking that that might have been moved over to Nintendo Switch 2, but if they're still polishing that up and making sure it's as good as it can be and still planning to release it on the Switch 1, then I think we could probably see it at this June Direct. I think another game that I would love to see officially remastered for modern consoles is the Tales of Zillia duology, and I do remember that one of these games, I think it was the sequel, was actually delisted on the PlayStation 3 store as recent as a few months back. So it would be really awesome if we get this duology remastered on all modern consoles, and if we see it at the Nintendo Direct for the Switch, that would be a really nice treat for us to see. And hopefully these remasters are done a lot better than the Tales of Symphonia remaster was. Let's continue on with my final few predictions. And before I talk about my final few predictions, I just wanted to remind you guys that these are just my predictions and majority of these games will probably not even be at the direct. Most of these games probably won't be there and, and there's going to be no possibility or no reality where all of these games and all of these predictions come true. That's what I tell people. I ask them, do you think we'll have a direct with Fire Emblem, Zelda remasters, Metroid, and new announcements and new third party games on top of that? Because if so, that's easily 
100% probably the greatest Nintendo Direct of all time. So let me know what you guys think and what your expectations are in the comments below. And speaking of Metroid, <laughs> I guess we have to talk about the elephant in the room, Metroid Prime 4 and the rest of the unknown and missing Metroid Prime games, Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3. Just like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, I am confused about the absence of Metroid Prime 2 and 3 on the Nintendo Switch. I was literally expecting those games last year at the June Direct, then again at the September Direct. It's just weird to have Prime 1 remastered out in February as a shadow drop and then just not releasing anything else after that to keep the hype going for Metroid fans and fans who are curious about the Metroid Prime series. So I feel like if there is a time to release those remasters, I think it is in this direct. As for Metroid Prime 4, I am cautiously optimistic that we'll see this game. I've been saying ever since the beginning of this year, we have to see this game. We have to, have to, have to. And I was saying we have to see it in a general direct in February. We didn't get a general direct in February. And now here we are. A general direct in June. But I also remember Mr. Furukawa's words that nothing Nintendo Switch 2 related will be at this direct. But does that mean even games that would probably be cross gen on the Nintendo Switch 2? That is a little bit of a blurred line there. See, a lot of us feel like Metroid Prime 4 could be a Switch game as well as a Switch 2 game sort of simultaneously releasing on both systems depending on when the Switch 2 launches. But Metroid Prime 4 being already a Switch 1 game, does that give it the green light and the okay to be at this Nintendo Direct? I think the safest prediction regarding anything Metroid is to only expect Metroid Prime 2. That is it. No Metroid Prime 3, no Metroid Prime 4, and here's why. I feel like Nintendo just wants to stagger these Metroid releases. Metroid Prime 1 in February of last year, Metroid Prime 2 maybe at this June Direct, maybe it's Shadow Dropped, who knows. But then maybe releasing Metroid Prime 3 slowly a little closer to the release of Prime 4. And if Prime 4 is still not ready to be shown, if they still want to wait till the official reveal of the Nintendo Switch 2 or a really big blowout presentation next year or something like that, then I think the safest prediction and the one that we will most definitely get for sure, hopefully, I'm, I really hope, <laughs> is Metroid Prime 2 at least. I'm not getting my hopes up for this direct, but I'm pretty excited and <laughs> the main reason is because I really hope that Fire Emblem is there and I really would like to see Fire Emblem there. And what's great is I feel like if they do a lot of good announcements in here, if they pull all the right stops, if they have the right games, if they have a good variety of announcements, I think this could be a really great and really awesome and just impactful send off for the Nintendo Switch moving on to the Nintendo Switch 2. I have a feeling that the Switch 2 is going to be announced in September, so we probably won't get a general September Direct, so this could theoretically possibly be the last official Nintendo Direct for the Nintendo Switch 1. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what your predictions are for the Direct. Was I a little out there with these predictions? Do you not agree with some of them? What do you think about my opinion on some of these announcements and how some of these games could turn out to be? Especially Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. How do you think those games will be remastered? How do you think Metroid Prime 2 and 3 could be remastered? Do you think we'll see Metroid Prime 4 and, of course, do you think we'll see Fire Emblem 4 Genealogy of the Holy War Remake? I'm really holding out that we do. And of course, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe for more content like this. This is Nishquick, signing off, have a great day, go play some great games today. Like a whole bunch of Nintendo games on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one, later.
Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.